Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, and today we're going to take a look at another horrible case with you. The fear of snakes is perhaps the most common phobia on earth, and it seems understandable. Some of them are lethal, so fearing snakes is just a genetically ingrained instinct of survival in our brains. However, it would be unfair to label snakes solely as predators. They are also amazing creatures with incredible abilities and appearances, capable of evoking a wide range of emotions, but certainly leaving no one indifferent. In our story today, we'll talk about a rare snake that suddenly attacked its owner, ending his life. Ben Rennick was just 29 years old when he was found deceased in his renowned snake breeding facility. Benjamin Blue Birch Rennick was born in August 1987 in Missouri. He grew up in the countryside alongside his family. Ben had an older brother, Sam, with whom he shared a very close bond. In 1989, the Rennick family moved to a picturesque farmhouse. The boys spent a lot of their time outdoors, and it was then that Ben began to take an interest in snakes. A tragic incident in September 1992 triggered a series of unfortunate events. The family was away when a gas leak occurred, leading to an explosion in their beautiful home. The Rennicks were forced to move into a trailer. After some time, Ben's mother, Kim, was diagnosed with stage 4 breast cancer. Despite these hardships, the family overcame. They were very close-knit and always supported each other in any situation. Recovering from previous tragedies in 2002, they moved to a new home, where a special room was designed for Ben to keep his snakes. In 2009, after a long battle with cancer, Kim passed away. Before her death, she made her sons promise to look after the farm and pass it on to their children. As time went by, Ben's love for snakes knew no bounds, and the young man founded Rennick Reptiles, which soon gained recognition. This allowed him to sell snakes worldwide from the United Kingdom to Japan. Breeding snakes became the meaning of his life. He was described as a great breeder who was devoted to his work, caring more about the snakes than the money. The reptile farm bred a multitude of reptilian subspecies, growing and reproducing both the most common species and some of the rarest subspecies on Earth. Ben's reptiles were of immense value. Just a portion of his python collection was valued at over $1 million. However, Ben was lonely and had long dreamed of starting a family. So in 2010 at a party, he met a woman named Lindley. Their relationship progressed rapidly, and within weeks, Ben introduced his girlfriend to his brother Sam and Sam's fiancé Eli. Eli and Lindley had sons from previous relationships, so they quickly found common ground and became friends. Lindley swiftly became part of the Rennick family, and they started living together. She assisted Ben on the snake breeding farm. They were in love and lived as a full family even before they made their union official. In March 2012, Lindley gave birth to a daughter, Amelia. Ben was overjoyed to become a father. However, the happy family life once again encountered problems. Frank Rennick, Ben's father, encountered significant troubles in his business. Previously, he had engaged in several fraudulent stock transactions to cover medical bills and Kim's treatment. Just a day before the FBI planned to visit the farm, Frank took his own life. Frank's passing halted the investigation. The sons were deeply affected by yet another parental loss but managed to get through it, coming together and supporting one another once more. Ben inherited the house and farm while Sam received a sum of money far exceeding the house's value. Each brother had his own family and children, but this never prevented them from living as one big family in their parents' home. They lived together, and Sam, without hesitation, spent his inheritance on repairing the farm. Initially, everything was fine, but soon financial disputes caused a rift between the brothers. After their father's death, Ben focused on his business and his family. He decided to formalize his relationship with Lindley, on April 14th, 2014, they married, making Lindley a full-fledged member of the Rennick household. Lindley and Ben opened a second business, a spa called Essentia Spa Inc. But the business Lindley managed faced financial difficulties. Ben and Lindley often argued about finances. Lindley worked hard, but not enough to cover the salon's expenses. At the same time, Sam and his wife also faced financial challenges. 
Ben allowed them to sell some of the furniture in the house. Lindley disapproved, leading to a rift between the families. The relationship was irreparably damaged. Ben decided to improve the family's financial situation by arranging to sell some rare reptiles for a significant sum. However, the deal fell through due to a tragedy that occurred on the farm. On June 8, 2017, Lindley walked into one of the farm's barns. There, on the floor in a pool of blood, lay Ben. Lindley called his brother Sam for help and dialed the emergency number. She reported that she had found her husband unconscious on the ground. During the conversation, Lindley dropped the phone and ran outside. Sam continued the conversation and confirmed that his brother was dead. Sam suggested that a snake might be to blame for what had happened. Montgomery County Sheriff's deputies were called to the snake breeding facility. For the first time in a long while, law enforcement officers were afraid to enter the farm, facing the prospect of encountering over 3,000 snakes and conducting an examination of a man lying in blood, wary of a possible attack from a deadly viper believed to be the assailant. However, when Coroner Dave Colbert arrived and took a closer look, he discovered a shell casing on a shelf at eye level. This was something far more sinister than a venomous snake bite. Shell casings were found near the body, but no weapon was discovered. The assailant had shot Ben multiple times in the back and head. None of the relatives heard shots or saw the attacker. Sam and Lindley were taken to the sheriff's office for questioning. Lindley suggested that Sam might be involved in her husband's death, even citing a motive. Apparently, Ben wanted to sell the house, but Sam was opposed. Sam was asked to undergo a lie detector test, which he passed. The police had no reason to detain Lindley and Sam, so they were released. The investigation into who might have wanted Ben Rennick dead began. Various theories were proposed, the first being robbery, but it remained unconfirmed as none of the rare snakes were missing, and all valuable items remained untouched. Just days after the demise of Ben Rennick, police interrogated Lindley. They tested her hands and clothing for gunpowder residue, but the results came back negative. Following her husband's funeral, Lindley ceased communications with Sam and Eli. She sold her husband's business, inherited the house, and sought to claim a life insurance payout for Ben worth $1 million. After receiving the insurance money, Lindley planned to sell the Rennick family home for $740,000. Sam's family was notified about the eviction. Upon discovering the rapid insurance claim and business sale following her husband's passing, Sam Rennick suspected his brother's wife in the tragic event, sharing his suspicions with investigators. Lindley was called in for another interrogation. There, she admitted to having complex relations with Ben and occasionally meeting with a man named Arik. Arik had an alibi, so he was excluded from the list of suspects. Lindley's admissions were startling. It turned out, about three years after their marriage was officially registered, she was unfaithful to Ben, with at least two different men. Messages between the couple showed that Ben suspected his wife of infidelity, which had indeed strained their relationship lately. On October 5, 2017, the Missouri State Highway Patrol conducted a polygraph test on Lindley, informing her that she had failed. However, without solid evidence linking her to the crime, she was released. Nevertheless, the investigation into Ben Rennick's case slowed but did not cease. Later, investigators learned that a month before Ben Rennick's passing, Lindley had made her first attempt on his life. She concocted a story of Ben being a cruel tyrant who oppressed her daily and even physically assaulted her. She shared this story with a spa salon co-worker to garner support and assistance. They plotted to end Ben's life by giving him a poisonous protein shake laced with 15 Percocet pills. Unaware, Ben drank it. He fell severely ill during that period but survived, oblivious to the fact that he had been poisoned. Lindley Rennick was interrogated by investigators six times in total. Further assistance in the investigation came unexpectedly. On January 14, 2020, information from a state prison surfaced, 
with a witness claiming to have knowledge about Ben Rennick's demise. The witness was Brandon Blackwell. He told Missouri State Highway Patrol investigators that Lindley had shot Ben and had conspired with her ex-boyfriend. Brandon mentioned that he had dated Lindley while she was married to Ben. 1.5 years after Ben's death, they had a child together, but by 2019, they had separated. Brandon claimed that Lindley confessed the act to him. She had conspired with her spa salon co-worker, Ashley Shaw, and another ex-boyfriend, Michael Humphrey. Years after Ben's demise, Lindley Rennick and her former boyfriend, Michael Humphrey, were arrested for Ben's death. However, following their arrest, Lindley and Humphrey pointed fingers at each other. So who really pulled the trigger? According to Michael's testimony, on the day of the event, he went to the farm with Lindley, who asked him to pose as a buyer. He put on gloves and was supposed to shoot Ben, but couldn't do it. Eventually, Lindley took the gun and shot her husband herself. The investigation into Ben Rennick's death continued for three long years. On January 16, 2020, arrest warrants were issued for Lindley Rennick, Michael Humphrey, and Ashley Shaw. Ashley was offered immunity in exchange for her cooperation, and she testified against her boss. The former spa salon employee shared that Lindley had complained about her husband and convinced her to assist in a plan. She claimed that Ben was constantly belittling, demeaning, and even physically harming her. Fearing divorce would lead to Ben gaining custody of her children, Lindley decided to eliminate him, planning together to poison him with a lethal cocktail. During questioning, Lindley and Michael accused each other of Ben's demise. In October 2021, Michael Humphrey faced trial in Audrain County. His lawyers hoped that revealing the murder weapon would lead to a second-degree murder charge. Despite possessing the gun, no conclusive DNA evidence was found on it. To lessen his sentence, Michael Humphrey also made a deal with the prosecution, disclosing the location of the murder weapon. His cooperation led to a life sentence on a less severe charge of second-degree murder, without defense at the trial. On January 3, 2021, Michael Humphrey was sentenced to life imprisonment with the possibility of parole. The trial against Lindley Rennick began on December 6, 2021. She was charged with the shooting and demise of Ben Rennick on June 8, 2017, at his snake breeding facility in New Florence. Court documents stated that the plot to end Ben Rennick's life originated in Lindley's spa salon. The probable cause statement mentioned that Ben was aware of Lindley's financial troubles and that Lindley feared Ben could take her children away, leading her to fabricate a story of domestic abuse. The first attempt to end Ben Rennick involved a protein shake laced with narcotics. Search warrants for Ben and Lindley Rennick's Facebook accounts confirmed the protein shake story and Ben's awareness of Lindley's financial issues. The court hearing detailed the events of the day Ben Rennick was killed, fully reconstructing the sequence of events through cross-examination. On the day of the incident, Michael Humphrey picked up Lindley from the spa salon, while Shaw sent text messages from Lindley's phone inside the spa to conceal their true location and mislead the investigation. According to court documents, Humphrey intended to end Ben's life, but asked Lindley to do it. After firing shots, Humphrey collected most of the casings, but missed some in his haste. He also disposed of Lindley Rennick's clothing after returning to the spa, where Lindley took a shower, which helped avoid detection of gunpowder residue on her hands and clothes on the day of the incident. Defense attorney Catherine Berger asked Lindley Rennick to share her personal and family history, education in massage therapy, relationship with ex-boyfriend Michael Humphrey, work history, and the lead-up to her marriage with Ben Rennick, portraying the suspect as a victim of domestic violence. However, no evidence of such violence was found, undermining this defense narrative. Michael Humphrey was part of a group that allegedly planned to end Ben Rennick's life. Lindley Rennick described her relationship with Humphrey as codependent, involving his drug dealing and her addiction. Lindley Rennick ended her relationship with Humphrey at the end of 2010, According to previous witness statements, she reconnected with him about a month before Ben Rennick's death. Lindley Rennick denied the prosecution's allegations 
related to the supposed plans to end Ben Rennick's life, including the alleged failed attempt to poison Ben with a protein shake containing narcotics. The couple was experiencing both financial and marital difficulties. The spa center was failing, and contractual deals for selling snakes had yet to yield financial benefits. In court, Lindley admitted to having extramarital relationships with various men, for which she expressed deep regret. By the time Lindley considered discussing divorce, she was unsure who to turn to, given her father's divorce history and his firm views on divorce and affairs. Wanting someone to support her in her conversation with Ben, she reached out to past boyfriends, leading to a reconnection with Michael Humphrey. During cross-examination by the prosecution, Lindley admitted to willingly participating in her husband's death and intentionally concealing Michael Humphrey's involvement. Due to marital difficulties, including disputes, alleged physical and sexual abuse by Ben, and the stress associated with his snake breeding business, Lindley feared him and was concerned about his mood when she would bring up the topic of divorce on June 8, 2017. Hence, she brought Michael Humphrey to the farm that day. She claimed her presence at the farm was not to end her husband's life, but to request a divorce. Lindley said she took some trash from Ben to dispose of. Then she entered the nursery, where she saw Humphrey and Ben finishing washing their hands. Lindley recounted not being able to hear their conversation, focused more on how to tell Ben she wanted a divorce. Lindley's voice trembled as she described seeing Humphrey draw a pistol and shoot her husband. I screamed and ran outside. Then I heard a few more shots, everything went numb, and I remember just staring at the trees and Michael as he ran up to me and pushed me towards the car, Lindley testified in court. Reality hit when she returned to the snake breeding facility and discovered Ben's body. Lindley called Ben's brother, Sam, who arrived. They checked for a pulse and whether Ben was breathing, thinking he might still be alive. Lindley expressed regret for not telling the police then and there that she had been at the breeding facility earlier with Michael Humphrey and not sharing her version of events. As she was suspected in her husband's death, the life insurance policy Ben Rennick had taken out years earlier could mean a payout of $1 million. Lindley waived her rights to this money. Ben Rennick became the beneficiary of a trust after his father's death. His assets went to Ben Rennick and his children, not Lindley. Nonetheless, Lindley received money she had contributed to the trust and a scholarship for her daughter. Lindley confessed she sought support, so she shared her version of events with her then-boyfriend, Brandon Blackwell. However, that relationship ended as soon as Lindley had Brandon's child. During the court hearing, Lindley shared her regrets about her continuous deception. I was just trying to escape from the truth of what happened, she said adding that she never wished for her husband's death. Lindley Rennick's defense team did not petition for a new trial following the final verdict. No appeals were filed against her conviction. Lindley Rennick filed a defamation lawsuit against Blackwell, claiming his statements about her involvement in her husband's death were false. However, prosecutor Kevin Zellner questioned Lindley Rennick's testimony during cross-examination. He queried why she did not check on her husband after hearing gunshots, why she did not call 911, why she sent friendly messages to him and Humphrey after the shooting, and why she continued to lie even as emergency responders got involved. Rennick admitted to suggesting the police consider Ben's brother as a suspect. Often tearful and somber during her testimony, Prosecutor Zellner portrayed her as a mastermind, albeit a clumsy one. He described her as cruel enough to accuse the deceased's brother, saying during his rebuttal, Do you know how cold your heart is? During the sentencing for second-degree murder and armed criminal action, Lindley Rennick broke down. She did not admit her guilt. On December 9th, 2021, she was found guilty of second-degree murder. The 33-year-old Lindley Rennick was sentenced to 13 years for murder, and an additional three years for armed criminal action. In January, Judge Kevin Crane handed down a total sentence of 16 years. The sentence outraged Sam and other relatives of Ben. They believed that Michael and Lindley deserved life imprisonment. 
as they were both as guilty as any other co-conspirators. Sam Rennick's final words expressed complete disappointment. He was astonished that the life of a person in Missouri could be valued at just 13 years. Ben Rennick was a young man full of hope with a potentially bright future. Due to the actions of one woman, he and Sam found themselves in a difficult situation, now unable to mend their relationship. Yet, the great snake breeder, Ben Rennick, continues to live on in a way he would surely have appreciated. He became famous for breeding a new snake species named after him. The reptile community was shaken by Ben Rennick's death and wanted to help. They collected and donated money to support Ben's family. Ben's valuable snakes were dispersed and sold to various reptile experts and enthusiasts, while the main snake in Ben's life was sentenced to 13 years. And we may never truly know who actually pulled the trigger, as this story is filled with the lies of the most vile and despicable reptile, Linley Rennick. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to my channel. There are many shocking stories ahead of you.